Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Manuel, Delta Lima 2, Mike Alpha November. Welcome back to my channel. This video will be a two-part video. Uh, I'm revisiting uh, the NFET half-wave and the transformer. If you remember my last video, um, the activation, the double activation of uh, Lauterachtal and uh, Castle Hohenburg, you might recall that I was not satisfied with the SWR of the NFET half-wave I brought, so <laughs> even though I'm planning to uh, investigate this a little bit longer, um, this was reason enough to, yeah, the kick in my butt I needed, basically. And by the way, don't complain about my facial hair and hair. Uh, I'm in nerd mode. I don't care at the moment. Get used to it. So, what happened? Um, I discovered a while ago that uh, Jan, Delta Golf 1, Juliet Alpha November, has found and published a different way how to um, measure the efficiency of the NFET half-wave transformer. What I did back then when I discovered it uh, is I purchased all the cores that he tried that uh, were claimed to work better. But I never did anything because, yeah, time. Uh, but now I want to redo it the right way. So the first step is uh, to A, confirm that the new measurement method he is using, uh, which he claims to have uh, sourced from AI6XG, to test if that measurement method is repeatable, is uh, reliable, is accurate enough. So compare that to the measurements I've done before. That's one thing. The other thing is confirm or not confirm that the cores that are set or found to be better than the ones we used before are really better than the ones we used before confirm the measurements others did and by the way he was also relying on uh, measurements from Colin MM0 OPX you might know him as he has also a YouTube channel and this will be in this video in the next video I'm going to further investigate what the winding pattern has influence uh, to efficiency and SWR and in the next step, we will then build something to bring down the SWR with the hopefully optimum uh, core and winding pattern. So I'm starting at Delta Golf 1 Juliet Alpha November's GitHub page. I will put you the link in the description below. And there is this document um, published on 20th of June this year, 2023. If we open that document, Everything we need to know is explained. Um, especially interesting is the method, how he obtained his measurements. Those are the results. Uh, you can see it's a little bit jittery uh, and constantly jittery, which means he's using obviously a, a cheaper, maybe not so well calibrated nano VNA. Um, but those are his results. And uh, this is the measurement setup. This is how the measurement is done, but let's have a look how the calibration is done before. Um, this is what I did with my test jig, I will show you in a second. Um, we are measuring the effects of our load, the 2.4 kilo ohm or 2450 ohms resistor in my case. Um, so we can calculate that ag against um, the test, uh, the device under test. Um, so Here's the transformer. This is the measurement setup. And the load we have just calibrated is in there. And in order to compensate for that, because the nano VNA is a 50 ohm system, we need to know how that behaves uh, in a 50 ohm uh, uh, environment, especially uh, considering that it's not a purely resistive load. Uh, it's It has also capacitive elements and inductive elements and we need to know that with the nano VNA and are calculating that out using those formulas below here. But 
don't get turned off right now. Uh, I don't understand that as well. I cannot calculate that. Uh, Jan has done us a very huge favor by publishing his Excel sheet, which can do that for us. But let's have a look at the test jig first. The test jig I built is basically two SMA connectors to connect it better to the nano VNA. Uh, the capacitor to compensate for SWR, which I put on every um, NFET half wave transformer. You might know from this one. And this is the load. I'm going to explain you in a minute what we do with that. But this is how my test jig, uh, test jig looks, which I used for measurement of all the cores today. Before we start with uh, the actual measurement, I also want to make you aware of Colin's work. Um, I will put you a link to his video in the description below as well. So this is a picture of uh, the actual measurement. This is the oldest NFET half-wave transformer I have. 1 in 49 with uh, 2 turns primary and uh, 14 turns secondary. As you can tell, the load is already in line. I'm feeding it back. And all the measurements, I need to mention that, all the measurements I did today were done in the same session. So I didn't turn it off uh, between calibration and uh, even the load calibration. I didn't turn that off. Uh, when I calibrated that, I did all the measurements within one session, stored all the curves on that device and did afterwards my uh, my math, basically. So this was the uh, FT140-43 uh, with two in 14 turns. The next one was the FT37-43. No, it was actually the 50. Uh, this was the 50 core. Uh, and by the way, those are the same that I used before in the uh, older video. I'm going to put you a link to the original video in the description below and uh, in the upper right corner. Um, those are the same. I, I kept them. I stored them uh, so because I figured I might need them. And I made picture of every setup um, because uh, this is now includes the the capacitor um, and then for the next measurement I had that one on a PCB already it has already the um, capacitor on there it's on one of DG1 JAN uh, PCBs Delta Golf 1 Juliet Alpha November Jan's PCBs I'm I have used that and so I'm just using the known and calibrated load here on that PCB. I'm no longer using the the primary side, let's say. The primary side is on here and I'm just feeding it through here. The next thing I tested was also the FT114 core on one of DG1JAN's PCBs. Uh, this was a different winding pattern than this one. Uh, while this was a classical transformer with the primary three turns twisted. Uh, this one here is a so-called auto transformer, which means um, you are um, winding simply 21 uh, turns and tapping the third one. It's a primary and secondary share the same line. They are um, galvanically connected. That's another way, another simple way of doing a transformer. I just wanted to know what's the difference between those two. And by the way, whenever I'm referring, yeah, let me let me talk to you about this later. Yeah, this was actually uh, the first test of two cores inside of each other. Those are already ferrite cores. Um, we are going to see how they behave later. You, you can only see the SWR curve, by the way. And this is uh, one of uh, the bigger cores. That's the big ferrite core that uh, Colin uh, was presenting in his video. I'm going to put you a link in the description to his video as well. Uh, this was actually the first core I, I bought after seeing Colin's video and before discovering Jan's work. And I have that lying around for quite a while, but I didn't get to do any tests with that yet. 
uh, I just built that on my uh, Uniform or one PCB and it, it left there forever. So this is also measured. Now let's have a look at the results. The table itself looks very complicated. You have a lot of sub tables. In this case, this is, for example, the, the calibration of my, or basically the, the measurement, the, the, the capturing of my uh, 2450 ohm uh, resistor. This is the curve that's being plotted um, over frequency. And then we have those sub pages uh, where we have different measurements. Uh, those are the values that come directly from the S2P curve uh, from the nano VNA uh, are being calculated uh, according to the formulas we have seen before. And everything here is then summarized on the results page. So very clever Excel sheet. Uh, <laughs> Chapeau, Jan. Thank you for your great work. Uh, thanks for letting some stupid people like myself uh, be part of something they don't understand, <clears throat> which means uh, those uh, mathematical formulas, <laughs> I could not solve them. So I just entered basically my values and this is the result. Let's zoom in a little bit. Mm. First, let's start with the, with the high power parts. Um, this was the first core, the Amidon FT140-43, two in 14 turns. The first one, I told you, you can see the curve. It starts at 80% at about 2 megahertz, goes down to, yeah, like 75% around uh, 5 megahertz uh, and rises again to about 80% at around about 21 megahertz and so on. And as you can see, the ferrite, the bigger one, the last one I measured, that was on the Uniform 01 PCB, the one that Colin was suggesting, in comparison to that, is way higher in efficiency. But before we go there, in the direct comparison, uh, we need to have a look at my old values. If you remember that table, I'm uh, putting you a link in the description to the video where I explained here my findings. So let's have a look here real quick. When we go, for example, um, over here. Let's look at the FT37-43 curve starting in the 75s or no, let's actually start uh, the other way around. <clears throat> um, in this case, I labeled lost power, which means uh, when you put in 100%, 30% are lost in the core at 80 meters. So if we look here, 3.5 megahertz, the efficiency is in the 72% region. So this is in that region, you know, 30%, 32% loss, 70% efficiency is about the same thing. Um, and while I ask you, and yeah, we can do this for, for all the curves. Um, while the absolute numbers do not necessarily match, I want to make you aware of that because this is a different uh, measurement method. I don't expect that, but what I expect to happen is that the trend is the same. And the, the curve shapes here, they are exactly the same as in my older measurement, because we can see that, for example, the uh, 43, uh, FT1 1443 um, was not performing good uh, at 10 meters and not too good at 80 meters, but very well in the middle. Now let's have a look at the curve of those two. And you can see exactly the same. Huh? It's going up and going down again. And by the way, now we are already in the middle. The two different winding patterns, the auto transformer, the one with the tap and the real transformer, as you can see, are almost identical. So it's really dependent of the core and not so much of the, the pattern itself. But that needs to be figured out in a separate video. Um, how much effect has the winding pattern? Um, now let's have a little bit more look into the results. So I could basically confirm 
the measurements I did before with the uh, FT37, the FT50 core, the FT114 core, and here's uh, this new combination with the two ferrite cores, the 601 and the 1101, uh, which looks basically like a FT114-43 plus uh, FT82-43 uh, inside each other. I think it's probably just that. Um, because amidon toroids are anyway produced by ferrite. And yeah, you can see the efficiency is way higher. And remember, all of those measurements, including the ones for QRO here on the left, were done in the same session. This means those numbers are absolutely comparable to each other. This means by just using the right ferrite core or right ferrite core combination, we can increase our efficiency of the NFET half-wave transformer, the broadband transformer, by at least 10%. We are here like in the 75% region, here we are in the 90% region. So that's even more. And on the QRP side, you can see the very same thing. Um, this ferrite core combination outperforms all the others. This is our biggest takeaway uh, today from this experiment. So there is better cause and the measurement method is uh, working that Jan was suggesting. And uh, practically for us, he also provided this uh, Excel sheet so we can comprehend the measurements ourselves. And it is basically showing the same thing as if you would uh, have when uh, measuring back to back. <clears throat> and back to back always means, of course, you need to wind two transformers, while this measurement only requires one transformer and a little bit of uh, Excel work afterwards. Okay. So let's wrap up this video. We found out today that uh, Delta Golf 1 Juliet Alpha November's measurement method in combination with this Excel sheet that takes care of the math for us is actually working and confirming the results we had before. One good finding. Thank you, Jan. Um, and uh, the other thing we found is that the measurements uh, that Colin has done and Jan has also done, uh, we can confirm. The ferrite cores uh, they are using, they were using, are actually better for the work in our NFET half-wave transformers as the uh, previously used uh, amidon cores. And we can get out a little bit more efficiency. That's a good thing. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video when we are going to tackle the winding pattern and the bad SWR. Let me know in the comments what you think about this measurement method. Uh, did you know that? Um, and maybe you have even better suggestions or uh, different winding patterns that you found that work best for you. Let me know in the comments so we can try them together. Bye bye.